So we're now going to turn our attention to some examples that illustrate how to apply completion stage methods from the Completable Futures framework in the context of the image stream gang case study. And we're going to show these in the context of the download image async method. And that method will call some completion stage methods that come out of the Completable Futures framework. So recall how we're using download image async. By the time that method is invoked, we've already used the factory method supply async in the context of check URL cached async to start the process of determining whether or not we've got a cached image. So what will be coming through the stream at that point will be a stream of completable futures to optional URLs. And so download image is going to take those, it's going to take that as a parameter and then decide whether or not to download the image asynchronously, assuming it wasn't already cached. So what it'll do is it'll download it and store it in memory. And as we saw before, later behaviors will just ignore any optional images. The map method here that will be returning something after download image async finishes will return a stream of completable futures to optional images instead of optional URLs, which is what came as the input to this stream, input to this map. And they'll have a value if the image is being downloaded or they'll be empty if it's already cached. So let's go take a look at download image async. And this is a really interesting method that illustrates some stuff we've talked about and it is actually quite relevant for your programming assignment because you do things similar to this, though not identical. So as you can see here, we take the download image async method takes a parameter called URL future, which is a completable future to an optional URL. And when that completable future completes, in other words, once we've figured out whether an image has been cached or not, we then call the then apply async completion stage method. And that registers an action that won't be executed right away, but will only be executed after URL future completes. And again, we pass in the get executor method, which we saw before, which returns the common fork join pool in this case. So here's what we do, and this is a really good example of using optionals. What we do is we say, if the URL in this optional is valid, in other words, if it was not cached previously, then go ahead and do a blocking download on it. And you'll notice that URL opt is the type that comes out of then apply async when the URL future completes. And we use the map method on optional. And the way map works is if the optional is empty, map is a no op. If map, if the optional is not empty, map applies the the method reference that's passed to it, which is a function in this case. So we either end up with an optional, we end up with a completable future, well, let's see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so we'll asynchronously run blocking download if URL opt is non-empty. And we'll use the common fork join pool and we'll use the manage blocker mechanism. So blocking download is a method that will do blocking download in the context of the managed blocker mechanism so that the common fork join pool will be expanded as needed if blocking occurs or when blocking occurs. Here's what blocking download looks like. You can see it takes an image URL and it returns an image. So it's basically transforming the URL into an image by downloading it using the URL. And it uses the blocking task call and manage block helper method, which wraps the managed blocker interface in a nice clean way. And then we download the image and here's what download image does. I won't go into the gory details of this, but basically it opens up a socket to the remote server where the URL hopefully resides. And then it reads it one chunk at a time until it gets the entire image downloaded. And that is a blocking call. It's obviously a synchronous blocking call. And we wrap it in call and manage block to make sure that we grow the pool. And the whole thing is called in the context of an asynchronous operation so it doesn't block the caller. So it gets returned to the to return back to map from download image async is a completable future because that's what then apply async will give you to an optional image because that's what this call here URL opt.map does. So it'll either give us back an optional image that has an image that's in the process of being downloaded or it'll give us back an empty image if the URL opt was empty. A little confusing, but ultimately it's a really clever and clean way to do all this stuff. 
So that's the end of the discussion of download image async.